Hey, okay, we're here. How's it going? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. Your host, Bruce, here. Welcome to a Monday. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, did you have a good weekend? Was it all right for you guys? Uh, I had a wonderful day off yesterday. I loved it. Oh, I, uh, I needed it. <laughs> I was pretty tired. Uh, another busy week uh, here in Creston, BC. Uh, just a crazy day of weather today. Uh, raining this morning, raining overnight. Just yeah, sopping this morning by 10 in the morning, pouring, just pouring. Uh, 10 minutes ago, bright sunshine. And now we got uh, clouds and, and sun and clouds and sun. So doesn't know what to do, but later in the week, it's going to be nice. They say spring is in the air. Uh, but uh, reading some of my comments here, I can't be so sure. Unbelievable. Today's date, April the 16th, 2018, just past the halfway mark. And welcome to the middle of April, all of you guys. I hope you're doing all right. Um, for those of you who are uh, relatively new, never been here before, I'm Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I host a daily live stream show, Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern time. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I can't have enough, so I throw in a second show. I throw in an 8 o'clock Eastern time show on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Saturdays, for good measure, I throw in another one at 2 o'clock Eastern time in the afternoon. So I do eight live streams a week, generally speaking, except this week. Uh, this week, Thursday, I won't be on the air. I'm going to be in my car. I'm heading from Creston to Calgary, catching up with my daughter. Uh, my wife and I are going to see her, Jen and I, my wife. Uh, we're going to catch up with our daughter. It's her 30th birthday. And so, uh, you know, got to be done. Uh, but I will be live Friday and Saturday from Calgary and uh, look forward to talking to you guys from there. So that should be kind of fun, a little different for me. Um, what else is going on? Oh, the channel, the channel, the channel. My goodness, uh, I got to tell you, the uh, the numbers just keep coming in. Uh, the subscribers keep keep coming on. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm just going to take check the number right now to make sure I've got the latest update because I don't, I don't want to mislead you people because uh, I know you watch me. You keep an eye on me. 1,797. So we were at 1,756 on Saturday, two days ago, 1,797. 41 more subscribers have joined the channel in the last 48 hours. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, that's just absolutely fantastic. I remember it, it took me uh, <laughs> September, uh, October, August, September, October, November. It took me four months, four months and a day to get to 100. <laughs> From zero to 100 subscribers. After I begged and pleaded all kinds of relatives and friends of mine to make the first 10, <laughs> the next 90, it took me 101 days. <laughs> I got 40 in 48 hours. Isn't that something? It's just, it's a whole new world in which I'm in, in here. It's fantastic. Th thank you for joining me, all you newbies. Thank you for joining me, all you oldies. Uh, and you're not that old uh, because, uh, what was it, 1st of January, I was at oh, 200. So in three and a half months. I've added uh, 1,570 subscribers. I mean, just wow, 1,590 actually. Unbelievable. That's fantastic. Uh, subscribers are coming in from everywhere. Um, I'm getting comments from all over the place. Some good, some not so nice, uh, but you know, it's part of the game. Uh, and I try to respond to everybody I can, and uh, I welcome all of you. Um, again, you newbies who are here, uh, what I do on, on these live streams is we talk about cruise ships, cruise ship holidays. Uh, news, events, uh, what's going on out there, um, you name it. And we're open to, uh, I'm open to any questions you folks might have about going on a cruise. If you're new to cruising, never been on one before, this is your channel. Uh, this is the channel for you because uh, uh, we have a whole bunch of people here who, who love to go on cruises all the time. And we're here to help you. Uh, anything you need to know about going on a cruise, or how to find a good deal, what you're allowed to take on a cruise. What do all these things mean? Like, what's a drink package? What's specialty dining all about? How do I leave tips? What's all this about? We can do this for you. I've put playlists together already on my channel, 225 videos now I think I have. I've got playlists on how you can find a good deal on a cruise, uh, how to pack, uh, how to use vacations to go.com, for example, to keep an eye on pricing, how to book a cruise, um, what, you, what you can spend money on on board and what you may not want to do, what you should pack before you get there. Uh, all kinds of tips and uh, and how to's, you name it. And then, of course, these live streams. This live stream will become part of my repertoire, part of my library of videos. So you can watch uh, the live stream I did last week, last month. Uh, I started doing these uh, January the sixth, actually. So it's now uh, February, March, April, three months and ten days. About a hundred days ago, I started doing live streams 
and I've been doing them ever since uh, because they're just so popular with my viewers. I like to engage with my viewers. If you type in here, tell me where you are. Where, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Uh, the gang will say hi to you if you've never been here before. If you, if you identify yourself as a newbie, everyone will say hi to you. And uh, if you're going on your first cruise, if you're a newbie, but you're going on a cruise, you've already booked it, tell us the name of the ship you're going, what's the, what's the ship you're on, and uh, where are you headed? Are you doing a Caribbean cruise or a Mediterranean cruise or whatever? And uh, if you have any uh, questions about any of the itineraries or the ports that you're going to visit, ask. We'll tell you. We've probably been there. <laughs> Fantastic. Today, I uh, did a video this morning uh, about the QE2. I got a... Uh, I caught, I caught wind of the QE2 in Dubai uh, opening up as a hotel uh, to the public. Apparently, it opens on Wednesday. And I asked the QE2 people whether or not I could have uh, press credentials to, to, to uh, talk about it. And uh, uh, I'd like to do a video. And they granted me permission. So I did a video this morning with all kinds of pictures of the QE2, pictures of I've had in my own library and pictures that they've just been releasing and the uh, video is going over very well. It's quite short, it's only about four minutes, but it says what it has to say. I have a little bit of information on it here today that I'll tell you about, uh, but it sounds pretty cool. It sounds, uh, I'm so glad that after 10 years, the ship is finally uh, gonna be open. And so I'll, I'll uh, address that in a little bit. Um, news also on, uh, on the sun, the Norwegian sun. Um, last I've heard is now the, the uh, 2,000 passengers who were on the last cruise uh, from the from Miami to Los Angeles through the Panama Canal, those people, they have a Facebook page, a group page, and they've been pressing hard for a refund. They've only been offered so far a uh, cruise credit equal to the fare they paid, but not for their taxes, fees, tipping, or any other expenses on another cruise. They've been, given a, they've been offered a credit against a future Norwegian cruise only to this point. And they're not happy with that at all. Uh, they just want a refund of their money. And they want to take their business somewhere else. Um, there have been posts put on that site now about the chemicals being used on the decks on these four consecutive cruises starting Feb, 20, Feb 2nd until March 31. Nasty stuff, really toxic stuff. And uh, the company that, uh, that makes this stuff and, and distributes it is also out of Norway. Uh, apparently, and um, and now these folks are are, are digging into the hazardous uh, nature of this product that these uh, well eight thousand passengers, four cruises, uh, two thousand two thousand passengers a cruise, upwards of eight thousand passengers and a thousand members of the crew were exposed to over the sixty day time frame, and uh, it doesn't look good. It, it's just terrible stuff. There are lawyers getting involved in Europe now. There are lawyers getting involved in the U.S. because apparently there's um, environmental, uh, there may have been environmental laws broken here. And so it, it's just, uh, it's a bad one. It's like I've said before, it's an onion. You peel an onion, one peel, one little layer of the onion, and there's another one. You peel that one up, there's another one. This story just keeps on delivering uh, more nasty news. And Norwegian is still not doing the right thing. They're still basically stiffing these people. Uh, the cruise before this one was a Western Caribbean cruise. They're only being offered a percentage on their fare. They're not even being offered a full credit. The two cruises prior to that, nothing. Not an offer of any kind to the passengers. It's just, uh, it's bad. It's bad. So uh, Norwegian's still dropping the ball. The PR department is paying the price. And my viewers are now telling me there are ads uh, everywhere popping up cruise sales, sales, deals on Norwegian cruises because of the cancellations. There's a whole bunch of folks canceling cruises with Norwegian and uh, we'll see what the fallout is all about, but they just haven't stepped up yet to uh, make it right. In Philadelphia, this is totally unrelated, <laughs> but it's kind of related. In Philadelphia this weekend, two uh, African-American males went into a Starbucks and uh, sat down at a table. One of them asked to use the bathroom was refused because they hadn't bought anything. The uh, management called the police <laughs> to take him out, and a gentleman showed up, a uh, non-African American gentleman, kind of my complexion, said that he was there to meet them. They were, they came to meet him at this store. He had asked them to meet them at this location. Police didn't care. They arrested these guys, took them to jail. Didn't get charged uh, because apparently the store, <laughs> the president of Starbucks, found out <laughs> because the story went viral on Twitter. 
the president of, uh, of Starbucks found out what happened, shocked and outraged, and uh, immediately contacted the uh, district attorney, the police, uh, the, the two gentlemen, the third gentleman. And he's in Philly. I think he's physically going to Philly to meet them in person to apologize to them. Now, that's called doing the right thing. Uh, this guy is just going over the top because he is, he's personally ashamed, embarrassed, outraged, and can't believe it happened. And it happened in his own store, his own, you know, his own uh, corporation. And the staff is being kind of uh, edumacated on how to handle something like this going forward. This is not acceptable in the Starbucks universe. And, um, you know, some people are saying police are right. Some people are saying police are wrong. People are right. The customers are right. right? At the end of the day, it's being it's being rectified. Apologies have been made, and uh, um, corporation has stepped up. In the case of Norwegian, it's not happening. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm stunned. I'm I'm personally stunned. I thought Norwegian by now would have got the message, and that they would be proactive on this deal rather than reactive. But they're they're barely reacting, and it's costing them. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of cruises have been canceled by passengers in the last two weeks and how many more will be and or how many cruises won't be even booked uh, going forward right now until Norwegian steps up, but they just, just not, they're tone deaf. They're just not getting it. I don't understand it. Anyway, that's my little rant. Uh, what can I say? Uh, anyway, let's say hi to who's here. I don't want to waste too much more time. I'll quickly say that my channel is still not monetized because I've been getting a few requests from viewers. They want to know, no, I am not monetized. No, I am not being paid to be here. I'm not a travel agent. I'm not an employee of a cruise line. Just again, for those of you who don't know or who are new, kind of watching for the first time, I'm an independent guy, love to cruise, love cruise ships. I've been on a couple Norwegian cruises, had a great time. I'm just really disappointed in them, but I've been on Royal Caribbean, I've been Holland America, I've been on uh, uh, America, uh, and Princess. And uh, as a child, I was on an ocean liner and uh, love, love the love the sea. So there you go. Anyway, uh, the only income I get now are from two sources. One, I just saw it pop up on my screen here. I get uh, super chat donations from viewers like you on my live streams only. So only when I'm on the air do I receive any income from viewers. And I've opened a store. I have a online store with Traveling with Bruce merchandise. And... Uh, <laughs> I get a real kick out of it. I think we've had five or six sales now of some coffee mugs and some t-shirts, and I thank you. And my first buyer of a t-shirt, uh, Peter Heckema, sent me a photo. He's wearing a shirt. He looks great, and he gave me permission to expose him to the world. And then he asked me for permission to expose the picture of him. Where I said, of course, tell everybody you want. And so the I tweeted it, and we've got it out on Facebook. And Peter, thank you so much for <laughs> You're the first one to just jump on a shirt. Fantastic. I understand now Mrs. Heckema is getting a shirt. This is awesome stuff. I can't wait to see that. So uh, thank you for you guys. Thank you, you guys, all of you viewers, for supporting me by just watching me, supporting me by retweeting my videos or, re or sharing my videos on Facebook, talking about me, uh, sending me super chats. You're under no obligation to do so. Buying my stuff. Uh, this is great. <laughs> I'll try to get more out. Uh, I love it. And I welcome all of you to the channel. I want to say hi to everybody before this gets too long. So first off, Peter Heckema actually was uh, talking already. He texted me at, uh, looks like at 4.10 uh, in the afternoon. So 50 minutes before I went on the air. And that's not an hour ago now. He's saying, good afternoon, Bruce. A little cool in Tarpon Springs, Florida today. It's only 69 degrees. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad. Nice and sunny, though, uh, with not a cloud in the sky. Back up into the 80s by midweek, right on uh, here. As I said, we're about 50 here. And that, for us, is <laughs> great. But it's still cool. Uh, we're going to actually hit 60 later this week, too. So we, we're crossing our fingers, hoping for that. Peter went on to say on a second uh, tweet, here it is, ordered another uh, TWB. Traveling with Bruce t-shirt today for my wife. Got the new dolphin logo as she loves dolphins. If you ever do a meet and greet cruise, you will have to design special t-shirts for the event. I know it. Uh, that's that's already in here big time, and uh, I can't wait to do that. Uh, believe me, I've got a few other ideas for special t-shirts. Yeah, more coming, more coming, absolutely more coming. Wendy Thompson, uh, hi all. Did anyone see that uh, Powerball? 
is giving a 45 Royal Caribbean five night cruises as awards in Missouri. How about that? They're doing like a kind of a secondary bunch of prizes. That's kind of neat. Pamela Jordan, hi, Bruce, and everyone's sunny and 50 here in Iva, South Carolina. Brr, a little cool. Yeah, but it sure beats the snow from those nor'easters. So what, a month ago? Uh, it, it's coming, but yeah, it is still cool. We need just a bit more. Jim Thomas, 60-ish here in Northern California. <clears throat> hey, everybody. And a big hi to you, Brother Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Thomas. Welcome back, sir. It's great to have you. Uh, Thomas Henry is here. Uh, hello, Bruce, uh, Wendy, Peter, Jim, and Pamela, 57 Fahrenheit in Richmond, Virginia, six days till the Star Transatlantic uh, Voyage starts for him. Fantastic. I know I'm. Uh, you're, you're going to let me know how it's going, and we're quite curious because uh, it's going to dry dock after your cruise. So we're quite curious to see what Norwegian does on this cruise. Fantastic. Valen is here from Argentina. Mar Valen Martinez. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mar Valen. Nice to have you back. Thomas Henry, Bruce, I have been listening to the Seaside Blogs the past day. Sounds a little like the USS Enterprise <laughs> 1701A in Star Trek V. <laughs> Thomas, you're going to have to help me out with the codes. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that it's okay. <laughs> is this a good thing or, or is it bad news? Or Are we talking about Klingons? Or are we talking about those little furry things that they had on the original Star Trek, you know, those little fur balls? Is it good or bad? I mean, <laughs> Randy Lucas, uh, greetings, Bruce, and all from aboard the Regal Princess, sailing into the Atlantic at 20 knots. Uh, there were 55 people in transits for this 15-day cruise, much older and experienced cruising group for this lake. Just so you know out there, again, if you're if you're a regular, you know this pretty well. But if you're watching this live or you're watching this tonight and you've never been here before, or if you're watching this six months from now, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, Randy Lucas is a, a subscriber of mine, and he is on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cruises on the same ship. He's on the uh, Regal Princess. He did two one-week cruises uh, out of Miami. One was, I believe, an Eastern Caribbean. The second week was a Western Caribbean. He just finished that, I think, on Sunday? And um, turned around yesterday, and now the ship is headed for a repositioning cruise to Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, on a 15-day cruise, and he's on day two right now, heading for Copenhagen, going across the Atlantic. And he has been joining us every day on my show, live from the sea. And uh, he's been on here. He was on here a little earlier. I'm not sure if he's still on now. He's saying, got to go. We'll listen later. Randy Lucas heard an interesting quote today. The longer the cruise, the older the crowd. That's right. That's right. And why? Because moms and dads and kids, kids get a three-day holiday break, a five-day holiday break, a one-week holiday break. Got to go back to school. You're on a two-week cruise. You're on a 15-day cruise in the school year. Very few children are going to be on board. Older crowd. Exactly. Wes Morrison, howdy, Bruce, sunny, and beautiful, a beautiful 83 degrees here in New Braunfels, Texas. You got it going on, buddy. It's your, you got your weather. You know it. That is fantastic. Charles Jordan, hi all. Has anyone seen where spring went to? Um, it was here for a few, for a few days, uh, but now we can't find it anywhere. Laughing out loud. Where is it? Yeah, it's uh, it's being fickle. It's being fickle. Uh, Thomas Henry, the buffet called Randy. That's probably right. Uh, Sylvia's here. Uh, Sylvia, it's 56 degrees. Survived the tornado in Greensboro. Oh my gosh, a tornado. The tornado literally was down the street from my house. Oh, man. Oh, man. Unbelievable, Sylvia. Good thing you're all right. Glad to hear. Debbie Emanuel. Hello, Bruce. Hi, everyone. Raining and about uh, 55 today in Northern California. It, it's, it's a little more rain. Uh, I hope that rain is being spread out over a bunch of California because it sure needs it. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers for California. Uh, Mary is here. Hi, everyone. 35 degrees. Freezing rain all day, and now windy here in New Hampshire. Uh, stay inside. Uh, get make some mull wine. You know what that is? You, you, you take you take a pot, put it on the stove. Take some red wine, pour it in there, and heat it up. Put a little bit of cinnamon in there. Pour that in your wine glass or a coffee cup. Probably coffee cup. Mull wine. That'll that'll get you through the thirty-five. That kind of clammy, biting weather. Mull wine. Hot chocolate will do it, but mull wines could be more fun. <laughs> Depends if you're alone or not. <laughs> uh, Pamela Jordan. Wow, Sylvia. I was thinking of you when I heard the tornado in Greensboro. Hope you're okay. Paul Wilgus is here. Hey, Bruce and all. 38 
in Virginia. What the heck is going on? 38. Uh, the last five days have been in the upper 60s and high 70s. Yesterday was 72 and uh, real bad storms and tornadoes. So, you know, something's just blown through there fast. Hopefully that's gone and you'll warm back up. Welcome, Paul. Scott Batchley, hi, uh, all. The wind is a blowing today, 62 and a little chilly here in Ventura, California. It's blowing everywhere. It's just blowing everywhere. Paul Wilgus, a town 10 miles away had tennis ball size hail. Wow. Whoa, that's big. Uh, we have had snow showers all afternoon today. I want spring. I can sure see that. Unbelievable. Randy Lucas. Okay. We're in the Princess Theater waiting on the comedian. Cool and rainy here today. <laughs> uh, on the ship. Fantastic. Sylvia. Uh, hey, Pamela. Lost power. I, I think I, st I still don't have power. Went to work to charge my phone. We'll be home around 7 p.m. to check again. My goodness. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Prayers. For you and all your neighbors as well. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's winter again. <sighs> 10 degrees. It's, it's minus 10 degrees Celsius. Oh, man, that's got to be uh, low 20s. Uh, 10 centimeters of snow and more on the way. I should have went on that early April cruise on the sun. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I don't know about that, my friend, but hang in there. Peter Heckema, after all, after the incident with the sun, do you know if the NCL stock has dropped? Uh, it's fluctuated a little bit, but it hasn't hit the market yet. Um, it, it, you know, I, I can tell you this much. The next quarterly report, if bookings are down, um, then maybe, you know, maybe they'll have to announce it. But if bookings are only off one tenth of one percent, it won't matter. It will probably, you know, it'll, it won't be, it won't be noticed by the analysts all that much. But we'll have to see. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to fall out. Uh, Sea Keepers here. Hi, Bruce and everyone. 82 Fahrenheit in the shade here in Tequista, Florida. I joined a few minutes late, and let me guess, you're talking about the NCL Sun. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, yeah, talking about that, and I'm talking about the QE2 today. Sh uh, Sylvia, thank you, Pamela. If I, I if I don't have power tonight, I'll be staying at a girlfriend's tonight. Oh, man. Jim Thomas came through with a $5 donation to my cause. Can you see that there, folks? Thank you, Jim Thomas, so much for a Super Chat donation. I appreciate it. Going to Calgary, I need gas money. I need gas money. I'm going to Costco. I got to get some stuff. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know who? Jen, uh, my Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, Jen, needs a hot dog. And I need, uh, I can't get a chicken bake. So I'm going to have to maybe get a hot dog as well. Yeah. So we're going to Costco in Calgary. Thank you for the contribution. It helps. Iskew Park, uh, the, the only way pea brain companies like the Sun Owners will get the message is if their ships start sailing with empty rooms. Yeah, I mean, if they, you know, if they drop the prices and they still can't sell them out because people are so mad at them, you know, there you go. Um, it really is uh, stunning to me. Uh, AJ Walsh, howdy from the West Coast, y'all. Hey, AJ, how you doing? Silo is here, 194 days to the bliss, uh, and the Haven in Mexico peeing like a cow on a flat rock here in Seattle. <laughs> well, I know where I'm getting it from. I'm getting it from you because we were peeing like that this morning. It was just coming down. But we've got some sunny breaks now, so uh, we're kind of hoping it'll. we have a bit of a turnaround here. Valen Martinez, uh, here it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want to give you spring either. We want to keep that for ourselves. He's laughing out loud. Love Cruising is here. Hi, all. Uh, Love Cruising. I got a promotion from uh, NCL, uh, HA, uh, right like I'd go on that cruise. Oh, wow. I got a promotional deal from Holland America, from Norwegian Cruise Line, excuse me. Ha, huh, like I'd like to go on that cruise. There you go. Uh, you know, there it is. Uh, who's here? David David Card is here, watching from Charlotte. 56 degrees right now. Going on first cruise on the Norwegian Star, beginning of June from Venice. Any tips? Okay, question, question, question. I'm asking a question here. You're going on the Star, and uh, isn't our friend... Uh, who was our friend? Isn't our friend just leaving on the star? Uh, so this must be the first cruise after um, Dry Dock. Am I am I getting this right, or am I dreaming here, dreaming in Technicolor? Uh, we'll have to see. Well, uh, first cruise in June from Venice. If you're if you're on the star, which is which will have been in Dry Dock. What that means is the star right now is headed to Barcelona in four or five days. It'll be there going right to dry dock, which means they're going to refurbish it. They're going to spruce it up. Now, we're told from our information sources we have, one of my viewers uh, was mentioning to me last week that the ship is going in for a light refurbishment. So it's not getting 
serious, major work done on it. So it's probably going to have a lot of uh, like new mattresses and perhaps uh, uh, new carpeting, uh, paint. They'll do paint, painting, lacquering, that type of thing. Hopefully, by the time you get on that ship, the ship will have been uh, uh, at sea for a week or two already. And will all the construction workers that are left over will have gone. They're out, gone, gone, gone. And it's just you and the crew, you, your passengers and the crew only. And you should have a great time. Uh, if you're going to be, uh, 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 let's see, from Venice, any tips? Well, uh, you're going to have a great time. The beauty about this cruise that you're on, uh, even even uh, even though you're on the Star, which isn't a brand new ship, of course, it's not brand new, but uh, it's probably 20 years old. Your cruise is going to be dominated by the stops that you're going to have. Um, if you're starting in Venice, you might be going down Croatia, perhaps to Athens, maybe Istanbul. Then maybe over towards Rome and Florence, and uh, I don't know where you're going to end up. Do you end up back in Venice, or do you end up in Rome, or do you end up in Barcelona? But uh, you're probably going to be in a port almost every day uh, instead of being at sea for a couple of days at a time, and that that's fantastic. Um, you're gonna you're gonna have um, great excursions, I'm sure. Uh, you'll enjoy yourself. Uh, the currency on board will probably be U.S. dollars. Um, the English will be. The language will be English, so you'll be fine with that. Um, and um, um, you'll have a choice of a, a bunch of different restaurants on board. Uh, they'll have the, uh, the Italian restaurant. They'll have the, uh, the Asian restaurant. They'll have the, ch the Japanese uh, where they make the food on the thing in front of you. Uh, then, of course, the main dining room and, of course, uh, you know all the other restaurants. So a number of them are free. Some of them you have to pay extra for um, and just uh, kind of pace yourself. Um, you're allowed to bring on a bottle of wine per person, as far as I know, uh, in your luggage. I would do that uh, if you enjoy wine. And if you uh, like soda or an energy drink, you're allowed to bring some of those on board. Uh, you can uh, probably put them in your carry-on or just shove them in your luggage. And uh, that'll mitigate your costs on board. Because if you're going to buy a, a soda on board, it's going to be like 250 maybe 3 bucks with a tip. Uh, if you're going to buy beer, it could be 5 to $8 a beer, depending on the price. So uh, uh, watch that. I wouldn't look at a drink card. Uh, I don't think a drink card is in your in your best interest where you can have unlimited alcohol if you pay so much a day. Uh, you're going to be off the ship every day probably uh, just going on land, and that means every hour you're not on the ship. You can't drink their booze, and if you paid so much a day, 50, 60, 70 bucks a day for a drink package, and you're not even on the ship to use it, you're wasting your money. Pay a la carte. Buy a glass of wine, buy a beer, buy a cocktail, buy water, and just – charge it to your card, and by the time the ship, the, the trip is over, you'll figure out, oh, yeah, I spent $300 in alcohol instead of $550 a person on a drink card. Uh, you'll you'll be much better off that way. Those are some of my little tips for you, um, and a gang will, will certainly click in. If you have any questions, uh, anything specific, please let us know. We'll uh, we'll try to answer those for you. Welcome, David Card, to the, uh, to the show. Uh, this is great. Love having a newbie here. Thomas Henry is it's going high there. Uh, Wendy Thompson, NCL is up a dollar two, uh, selling at fifty three forty four. I think the whole market is up today, so it's probably getting sucked along in the market. Peter Heckema, thanks, Wendy. Uh, Randy Lucas, by the way, Bruce, the lovely Michelle has been spreading your channel to everyone we talk with on the ship since we boarded. <laughs> oh, you know, we you know, we got these folks on a transatlantic cruise right now. They got fifteen days. They got about seven or eight days at sea. What what better way? To to you know pass the time on board a cruise ship, watch Charming with Bruce every day live. You know, <laughs> in the evenings watch the reruns and uh, watch the videos he's made over the last few months. It's fantastic. <laughs> now, Randy, if you could just get those folks to start ordering product off the store, so that when they get home, the t-shirts are waiting for them. We got a home run, buddy. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. And thank you, Mrs. Randy. This is fantastic. I love cruising. By the way, Bruce, 72 degrees here. Oh, you're killing me. Rita Freeman. Hi, Bruce. Just joined in. Very smoky here in Sydney from our bushfire. It's been terrible. Oh, no. Ah, not again. Rita, welcome back. I, I, I think you've been here before. It's great to have you. Wendy Thompson, we will uh, we will be in Florida. Peter Heckema looking for a house to buy. There, oh, there you go. Peter can, Peter can stir you right, I'm sure. Randy Lucas, aloha, Kaelin. Welcome, Rita F. Wendy Thompson, soon, very soon, not soon enough. <laughs> Moving to Florida. Can't wait. Peter Heckman, where is Florida, Wendy? 
<laughs> Where in Florida? He's asking Ocala, the Ocala area. Ocala, Florida. Paul Wilkes, beautiful area. Wendy, Randy Lucas want want much. Randy Lucas want much. Bruce, laugh out loud. Tommy uh, Eaton, hi Bruce, and all from Jacksonville, Florida. Where it, it, it is a cool. 70 degrees. I'll get through that. Where it's a cool. Welcome, Tommy. Welcome back. David Cart. Oh, thank you so much for the tips. I will be sure to let you know how it was. And he sent me a five dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. That is awesome stuff. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can always ask us here. Or if you want any information from me, uh, uh, if you got something that you come, you know come up with later tonight, just send a, a question on the comments on the bottom of this video or any one of my videos, and I try to answer all my uh, all the comments that I get in, and uh, we'll help you out, set you straight. Uh, you can always check my videos, of course, on uh, cruising uh, tips on what to do once you're on the ship. I've got a bunch of videos I've made uh, for that as well, and you can check it out at your leisure. Okay, a um, couple of things. I'll just mention today uh, a little bit about the QE2. I did a video today. Uh, if you get a chance, check it out. It's about four minutes long. The Queen Elizabeth II, uh, as most of you know, um, was built in 1969. And um, it was the only transatlantic ocean liner that really survived the 70s and the 80s. Um, by the time the 70s and 80s had come and gone, uh, all ocean liners that had been doing this had long gone. They were long gone. Um, uh, ocean liners were basically being mothballed or, uh, or forced into simply uh, Caribbean-type cruising and um, and uh, were you know scrapped or, or or just you know became so obsolete with the new technology and the new uh, the new rules that were required for the uh, to to ply the oceans that these ships were not uh, were not worthy of being uh, uh, upgraded anymore they were just too old and so they just disappeared from the view, you know from our view uh, and then of course in the nineties uh, the carnivals of the world and the the Holland Americas and the princesses and the Norwegian cruise lines a uh, Royal Caribbean. They came out with dedicated cruise ship ships that were not transatlantic ocean liners, not designed to handle year-round uh, North Atlantic ocean crossing um, in, in, in a real good way, like the QEW was. The Queen Elizabeth II was designed for the worst that the North Atlantic could throw at her, uh, whereas the cruise ships that started coming out were designed for relaxing Caribbean <laughs> tropical weather cruising, and they weren't even winterized for serious ice type weather. They were just totally not suitable for that. And of course, it worked. Uh, the cruise line companies made a ton of money going to Hawaii, South America, uh, and, uh, and avoiding winter at all costs by doing repositioning cruises to, to perhaps uh, uh, the Caribbean from the, from, the, from the Mediterranean in Europe in the fall and then in the spring back to Europe to the Mediterranean and Northern Europe in the dead of summer. And uh, that's how the cruise business went. In the meantime, the QE2 kept plodding along. And uh, by about the 90s and into the 2000s, it had, had a couple of retrofits. It got refurbished. Uh, it was refurbished in 94. It uh, had its engines uh, 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 changed over. It became a uh, more efficient uh, vessel. Uh, instead of going with bunker fuel, it went more with diesel fuel. Um, and um, the ship... Uh, continued to be economically viable because it was one of the last connections to the old days. And the, uh, the, uh, the folks in the United Kingdom had a very strong love affair with this ship uh, because it reminded them of the Queen Mary, uh, the original Queen Elizabeth ships, and the other White Star Line and Cunard Line ships from the past. So the QE2 adapted and evolved and adjusted its itineraries. And so for a while, it would do transatlantics. And then it began to do round-the-world cruises. Um, and it be this became a, ex an extremely popular um, uh, itinerary. A number of people would take the entire round-the-world cruise on the ship, uh, maybe every year or every second year, whatever it was. But a number of folks found that they could take a segment. You could go from maybe London down to Los Angeles, you know, through New York, Miami, through the Panama Canal up to LA, get off there. And other people would get on in LA and they would get off in Sydney. And other people would get on in Sydney and get off in uh, maybe Rome, that type of thing. So the, the ship would, would do segment sales and full itinerary sales. And every time the ship came to a city, uh, even if it was only once a year, it was a big deal. So every time the QE2 came to Sydney Harbor, 
all kinds of press would be out there. People with cameras would be out there because they never knew. Is this the last time I get to see her? I, I don't know if she'll be back. This might be it because the ship was showing its age in its design and its make um, where all the new cruise ships, none of them look like this ship anymore. They're all massive hotels, massive floating resorts. And so the Kiwi 2 had a real strong uh, pull on people's heartstrings uh, as a time machine, as a floating time machine. So today I made a video about the fact that uh, an announcement was made uh, Sunday. The Kiwi 2 is opening now. Uh, it's called a soft opening. They're opening as a hotel. This October will be the big official grand opening with celebrities and fireworks and you know the whole nine yards um but between now and i think you know, october i think they're getting the bugs out of her <laughs> i think they they're putting people they're letting people get in there and enjoy the ship and they're kind of the guinea pigs and <laughs> see how it's going to work out uh from what i read today um put my glasses on see my notes um uh, there are 224 rooms that are going to be available on a nightly basis as hotel rooms. Now, there were many more than that on the ship when she was operating as a cruise ship. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, the, the the lowest decks, the absolute lowest decks, uh, probably won't even be offered. They probably have gutted the rooms down below for extra storage um, to operate the facility, operate the ship as a, as a floating hotel. It's never gonna go to sea again. They've taken the lifeboats out. They've taken the davits out that held the lifeboats. Those are gone. Uh, they probably dismantled a bunch of the of its uh, of its um, you know amenities that they don't need anymore because it's not a self-sustaining vessel at sea. It'll never be at sea again. It is now going to be like the Queen Mary in Long Beach. It is going to become a floating hotel only, and that's its future. Um, and so the rooms that are available. Have all been, uh, I'll say, redone, refurbished. Some cases, perhaps some remodeling. Other cases, they probably just repair, replaced the flooring with new carpeting. They've probably uh, um, uh, either put in new, um, either uh, painted the walls or or put in paneling or put in um, you know whatever material on the walls, new artwork. Uh, they've uh, they're offering rooms with the original portholes. Uh, the smallest rooms have two portholes only. Um, and they're so tiny that the bed, <laughs> you can't walk around the bed. You can come to the bed on the one side and then the one, the, the person sleeping towards the portal has to climb over and just climb into the end on the one side of the bed. Uh, and you want to go to the bathroom, you got to climb over your friend and get up to your friend, your husband, your wife, or whatever, and walk to the bathroom. Um, so the smallest cabins are small. They're very tiny. Um, uh, but they have inside rooms and uh, a porthole, uh, ocean view or port port view rooms uh, available. Then they have what are called the uh, superior rooms. The first ones are standard rooms. Superior rooms, I believe, have three portholes. And they have a little seating area between the bed and the portholes themselves. It might only be about three, four feet wide. Uh, so it's a little, little deeper of a room, a little wider. Um, you can walk around the bed uh, barely, but you can um and the these rooms all come with a, a full bathroom so you're getting a, a shower and a bathtub in each of these rooms so any of the rooms that were on the ship if any of you have ever been on the ship uh let me know um and tell me what kind of room you had but i'm assuming there were certain rooms that were so small uh, perhaps interior rooms that uh, they may or may not have had bathtubs in every single cabin on board they may have only had shower facilities you know with a with a toilet and sink but uh the rooms they're offering uh will have that now the the, the the deluxe rooms and i'm not sure about the superior rooms but the deluxe rooms come with a a toilet and a bidet and a bathtub and so uh fancy um and then there are the captain's club rooms and those uh, have large windows instead of portholes they have large rectangular size windows and if you see photos of the ship either today or from yesterday you'll note that the higher up you go on the on the decks the the windows get larger for uh, for some of the decks that's where these rooms come from and on the upper level you come into the suites and they did have a small number of rooms with balconies and um, uh, I believe captain club rooms are available with balconies might only be 12 on each side or 10 on each side. It's not that many. 
Uh, we'll see, uh, you know, that will come out as time goes by. I don't know if more rooms are going to be, um, if even more rooms are going to be refurbished to be made available uh, for the hotel. It, it's possible that more are being worked on, as I'm telling you. So for the next few months, maybe they'll move it up to 300 rooms or 400 rooms. Don't know. I do know, uh, reading today, that the the Queen Elizabeth suite and the Queen Mary suite, which are the big royal rooms, are also going to be made available, but it might be by invitation only. Uh, again, I don't know how they're going to determine that. I, I'm really not sure. It's early days. This is just the first set of announcements. Um, they're talking about uh, all rooms will have at least one 49-inch flat screen television, uh, single or king bed, um, bathrooms with bath and shower. They will have a safe in the room, of course. They'll have a coffee and tea maker. Uh, there will be a mini bar with complimentary bottled water on, uh, on apparently on in all rooms from what I've read, at least if I've read it right. Uh, the deluxe rooms have a sitting area, the captain's club rooms, large windows and living room. Captain club rooms with balcony have a living area as well. Uh, royal suites uh, will have large bedroom, living quarters, mezzanine level, conservatory, and large veranda. So it's got all the stops. Uh, there are 13, uh, uh, 13 restaurants or eating areas. Apparently, that will be in operation. The Lido Buffet will be up and running. They will, they will have the Lido Buffet operating on the ship. Uh, the Queen's Grill, the Yacht Club, the Golden Lion, the Grand Lounge, the Chart Room Bar, and the Pavilion, uh, to name a few, will all be up and running. The casino uh, will be in there. The so-called machines will be there, but they will be decommissioned. There is no gambling in Dubai. So <laughs> you can't lose any money on this cruise ship. You can't win any either. Um, uh, but um, I, apparently some of the slot machines will still be visible. Um, 13, uh, 13 restaurants, a bunch of decks, 13 categories of rooms, I was going to say. Um, and the ship is also going to be open to the public for tours. So the ship is going to be a, kind of a, like the Queen Mary in a way, a floating museum as well. Now, there's a building uh, that's been specially constructed right on the pier. And there's a kind of a, a walkway, a gangplank raised up that uh, is air conditioned. You walk along to go into the ship. And I have a feeling that what happens is you uh, you come into the building, the large building, and you either pay an admission to come into the building that either lets you allow, lets you only into the building itself that is a, a museum in its own right, and or you get a ticket that gives you admission to the ship. Now, I don't know if you're allowed on the ship on your own or whether it's through a guided tour. This is to be released as we go forward. But if you're a room, uh, you're a hotel guest, you're going to have the front desk of the, of the ship, uh, probably in a separate area of that main building. So there may be one building where you go in here for the visit the ship. Over here, you go into the building for the front desk. And once you've got your key, your access, then that allows you uh, direct access onto the ship and uh, through security. So... Should be an interesting uh, thing to visit. I, I'd love to see it someday. Uh, I've enjoyed. I enjoyed my visit on the Queen Mary. Uh, I stayed on it for I think one night with my wife many years ago. We enjoyed that. Love to visit it again, and would love to see the uh, QE too. I got uh, about this close. Uh, I, I I almost was able to touch her, <laughs> not quite, uh, in Spain on her last uh, one of her last grand voyages. And um, uh, the name of the port escapes me, and I don't want to guess because I could be wrong which one it was. But um, in 08, I was on a cruise with my daughter on the Norwegian Jade. We were in port, and the Kiwi 2 came in, and she was brought in by the tugboats, and uh, she was lined up on the uh, pier just across from us. And uh, I took a bunch of photos because I knew this was the only time, uh, the last time, and the only time I would ever see the ship in person. And as an operating vessel, because I knew it already had been sold to uh, Dubai, that it was going there. Uh, I saw it in September, November, it was gone. It was in Dubai and won't sail it again. And so I took a bunch of photos and got out of the, my ship, walked over on the other side of the pier and literally stood beside the QE2 and got to take pictures right at the hull at the very front. And then I kind of walked along the side and took photos all the way down the side of a sleek looking vessel. Just a beautiful sight. 
And uh, I was really glad I took those photos because um, uh, today, the photos you take today of the ship, it doesn't look the same anymore. It's, it's stripped down. It looks a little more elegant now because it doesn't look as clunky with those old lifeboats on her. But uh, times change, and it's now a floating hotel, and uh, they've, they've kind of cleaned her up a bit from that angle. Anyway, that was my little point about that. Let's just see what folks are saying here about uh, uh, <laughs> Paul Wilkes is saying. <laughs> with this contribution from <laughs> from David Card, you can now buy your chicken. Uh, yeah, if I were in the U.S., I'd get a chicken bake, but I might end up with a slice of pizza or, uh, you know, I can get I can get at Costco in Calgary. I can get poutine. Uh, we got the poutine in Canada at Costco, and you Americans have no idea what that is. Uh, French fries with cheese curd gravy. It's delicious, and they have the chicken fingers now. They have the, uh, they have the little uh, the wings, the chicken wings at Costco Canada. Fantastic! They get like twenty pieces of uh, twenty wings. Uh, they're they're great, and you can just eat them the way they are with the seasoning that's on it, or you can get a dipping sauce. Canada's got a think of things, couple things going on. The Americans don't in Costco. Pretty good. Steve Bartley, Wendy. Uh, I was in the Army Reserve in Ocala. How about that? Uh, Peter Heck about Wendy, I am 20 miles north of Clearwater on the West Coast. This is a really nice area. Uh, Peter Wilgus, Peter, I used to live in Port, Newport, Ritchie. Peter St. Paul, just up the road from Tarpon Springs. Randy Lucas, okay, got to go. Laugh at the comedian aboard ship rather than Bruce and you folks. <laughs> He's out of here. Silo, switching over to my Xbox, going to watch Bruce in the 60-inch screen. Big head time. Look out. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Oh, my goodness. Tammy Ray, good day, everyone. Hi, Tammy. Silo, Steve. I was on the QE2 in 1987. Fantastic. Where did you sail her to and from? Let me know. Thomas Henry. Bruce, need to watch Star Trek V. Short version is the Enterprise was destroyed destroyed in ST3, <laughs> Star Trek Three, and the new ship was 1701A, and it had a lot of bugs from doors that didn't work keeping Scotty very busy. <laughs> There's a brief synopsis of what's going on. Thomas, thank you for that. <laughs> Just like the seaside, Scotty, I'm sure, is up to here with stuff to do on that ship. Oh, my gosh. Tammy Ray, I, I will uh, uh, go back and watch the video you made earlier today. Thomas Henry, that that er <laughs> earlier, yep, was in reference to the star's return from dry dock in early June. I was uh, driving now. Uh, at the PC, driving now at the PC. I don't know what that's, what he's saying. Uh, <laughs> all right, what do we got here? Temporary, I'm still here. I just need to watch the video we made earlier. Jim Thomas, need more thumbs. Debbie Manuel, hi, Jim. Uh, Jim Thomas saying hi. Samuel Wallace, hi, Bruce, and all thumbs ups are done. Well, how many thumbs ups have I got? Uh, I've got 26 thumbs ups, one thumbs down. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, if you uh, care to, you're, you're allowed to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this broadcast. And uh, I would appreciate any and all thumbs ups we can get. Just hit that little symbol right there, and it makes the uh, YouTube computers go. Oh, oh, there's a there's a video with action on it. It's a channel with action. It's called Traveling with Bruce. We should promote his videos, and uh, all the promotion is good. We take it. We we love it. Thomas Henry, always good to make you laugh. Bye, everyone. Wife is home, and we're going out to eat. Enjoy, Thomas. You take care. Peter Heckema, I think you should be. Spokesperson for Costco, think of all the revenue for that channel. <laughs> yeah, I could be, but I, I wasn't. I wasn't all that kind to them when they when I talked about their uh, traveling site. Uh, you remember that uh, we were comparing. I did a comparison between Costco travel and vacations to go, and booking a cruise through a cruise line. And um, the Costco site uh, wasn't the cheapest. It was it was kind of in the middle or a little higher. And um, even though you did get a cash card and you got you know some benefits. Didn't, it didn't uh, beat some of the prices that we were finding. But then again, uh, you know, I can't say that for every cruise. Just happened to notice on that particular day when I looked. Anyway, I found that interesting. Other news that I was going to tell you guys about uh, was a couple of days ago, and I never got around to it because we were having too much fun. <laughs> we did some trivia the other day, and, uh, and by the time I finished with that, there was no time for this story. It's just about the Ritz-Carlton. The uh, Ritz-Carlton Hotel... Uh, has a ship under construction right now um, that is going to hold 298 passengers. So it's a glorified yacht. I think it's going to be 700 feet long. So it's not like puny. It's big. 
Uh, but this big yacht with probably five or 600 crew um, is going to start sailing in February 2020. And uh, Ritz-Carlton has already ground, wound up their PR machine. They're already on it. They're already telling the world uh, for discerning individuals what to expect, what you can expect if you go on this cruise ship. Hasn't been named yet. Um, uh, February and March of 2020, it's going to start uh, sailing, I believe, out of Miami for the Caribbean. And then in April to June of 2020, it's going to be repositioned over to the Mediterranean. And it'll be in the Mediterranean uh, area for, for that length of time. And then in July, August, it's going to Northern Europe. Um, and in September to October, Canada, New England. So it'll have gone across the Atlantic to, to do Canada, New England for the fall. And then November, back to Miami for the Caribbean. And that is, in effect, its first nine months or so or so of, of existence. And this is a great way to promote your new ship. You, you launch it with great fanfare. You advertise like crazy and expose it. And then what you do is you only keep it in certain spots for a certain amount of time, so short periods of time, and you go to various locales. And so every time it gets repositioned, it'll have grand ceremonies, first time in maybe in Nice, the first time in Barcelona, it's first time in Southampton, the first time in Copenhagen, New York, Montreal, Quebec, Boston. <clears throat> and of course, Miami and throughout the Caribbean. So this ship is going to be heavily exposed, promoted, marketed by the Ritz-Carlton Company. Um, the ship is, is so tiny. Well, it's, it's being a yacht, all cabins are balcony cabins, obviously. And it'll be six-star everything, including the price. <laughs> the prices have not been revealed yet. The name of the ship has not been revealed yet. They're just teasing us with these little tidbits of information that are letting us know there's a new kid in town uh and when he arrives uh it's going to be one heck of a ship with some serious money behind it to uh, you know if you want to get on board this baby bring your bring a refreshed credit card with lots of room on it because um, uh they're going to give you top-notch service but it, it'll cost you it'll be, i'm kind of curious to see what their repositionings are uh, will they be in any way affordable i don't know kind of curious about that Anyway, that's uh, that's coming up um, in uh, 2020. So at least another year and a bit, uh, if not, uh, what did I say, two years? So, you know, it's quite a ways off, a year and a half away. <clears throat> a silo. A sale nowhere, he says, uh, on the QE2. Old techies may remember Digital Equipment Corp. They did a big event in Boston, December World 87, contracted the QE2 and a Disney ship to put the big wigs on. Oh, I see what you're saying. I was I was show crew for two weeks. So you were just on the on board the ship for a two week time frame uh, in Boston, but it didn't go anywhere. Isn't that something? Tammy Ray uh, saying uh, that that would be a good idea. They could give him free hot dogs on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, I'm cheap. <laughs> I eat I eat cheap. I guess uh, Costco pricing. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind a deal with Costco. That'd be all right. Uh, see what I can do. Um, <laughs> Uh, whatever sponsorships I can qualify for, we'll see what happens. I, I do not know. Uh, what was I going to say, too? Uh, I was just going to mention um, uh, one comment I got today. Uh, uh, it doesn't really bug me. I just kind of noticed it. It was, it was about my uh, discussion of the sun, uh, as if I haven't said enough about the Norwegian sun. But I guess the commentator didn't like the messenger. And uh, the, uh, the commentator uh, just was critical of the fact that I uh, – was all over the ship. And I, I just kind of going, you know, I, I love talking uh, the good stuff. I really do. I love, I love praising cruise lines. I love talking about great cruises, great ships, great itineraries, neat amenities, uh, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, when, when someone lets you down uh, or lets people down like Norwegian did on the sun, I think you got to call them out. I, I think I would just be, uh, I think it would be hip hypocritical of me not to mention it. And, um, but again, uh, sometimes folks just, uh, they see it in their own way and, uh, maybe, you know, they're trying to figure out what is he getting out of this? You know, what, what's he getting out of that? I, I don't know what to tell you. I have also noticed, uh, a couple of comments in Facebook. Uh, there's a one chat page for the group and, um, I've, uh, I've, uh, mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. I was, I was, I requested whether I could become a member of their group and whether I would, if they would mind, uh, I was going to talk about the sun and let them know that I was going to talk about the Norwegian sun. And the administrator of the group 
oh, she was delighted that I was uh, showing interest in the story and helping her and them promote this thing to let the world know what happened to them. And then I, you know, did more digging on it. And as you know, I found out that it started February the 2nd for 60 days. We've had this nightmare. And so um, the administrators and the other, you know, almost all of the folks over there have been very appreciative of the fact that I've come up with what I've come up with. Uh, but a couple of folks, <laughs> it's, it just kills me. I, uh, I announced that I uh, was doing an update video, which I did last week, which I told you folks about. It was just a recap of what's happened to the sun from February the 2nd up until about a week ago, including how Norwegian originally offered a 25% credit. Now they're offering a 100% credit, but no cash back. And I updated all that information. And uh, a couple of folks said uh, in their comments, they said, well, it looks like you're trying to promote your channel. Uh, it looks like you're using us to promote yourself. Going, well, you want me to talk about it or not? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to tell the world that I'm doing a report on a story, an update, a video on the sun's progress. And if you feel that that's my cheap way of promoting myself, well, I guess I'm guilty as charged. But if I don't tell the world I just did this video, how will the world know I did the video? So I just, so, I guess some folks are out there are more interested in the messenger than the message uh and you know there you go I, I, all i can say to these folks is please buy a t-shirt buy a coffee mug and think of me every time you wear it i mean you know please <laughs> hate, hate me if you must but hate me with a t-shirt on please i mean i don't know i don't know what to say what can i say uh do the best i can uh, <laughs> uh tammy ray saying uh, for costco membership groceries would be nice yeah I'll cash card you know that'd be all right uh, Peter Heckema, Ritz Carlton is owned by Marriott. Maybe I can use my Marriott rewards. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, Peter. Look into it. Isky Park, I totally agree, Bruce. The truth hurts. Keep the story alive about the sun. Uh, that's all I can do. Uh, you know, just do the best Do the best I can with what I've got. Uh, the comments that I get these days from my channel, uh, so many of them are positive, uh, appreciative comments. Um, I did have one individual who, who, who you know, was uh, saying, hey, you know, you did this story on the sun. And it was commenting on a video I did early on in the sun odyssey story that I've been covering. And at the time, the best offer was a 25% offer that had been made. And, and he said, hey, uh, you know, your video, uh, you're not mentioning the fact that they've got a 100% offer now. You're only talking about this 25% offer. So I, had, I wrote a bag and said, thanks for watching my video. But, uh, you know, when I made that video, that, that was the offer at the time. I've since made a new video, an update where, you know, it's, well, he wrote back. It's, oh, I'm sorry. I just saw that. It, it's all good. It's all good. So I get a lot of that. And uh, I don't care. It's okay. It's okay. People get up, you know, they get worked up and uh, they're figuring, oh, this is what he said about that. And I'm going to take him to the coals on that one. I'm going to, I'm going to straighten him out. It's okay. No big deal. I, I don't mind. I'm happy to, uh, you know, modify my story or, or update it. Uh, and if I make an, an error, I own up to it. At least I try to and uh, try to do better next time. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the story there. So there you go. Um, that's kind of my story today. Uh, I think I've covered what I want to cover. Uh, again, thank you to everybody who's been coming by. Thank you for those of you who are buying product on my store. Uh, if you want to get something on, on my shop, it's called redbubble.com on the upper right-hand corner. I think it's up here on the very top right-hand corner of my page are links. One is Twitter. One is uh, Instagram. But at the very far right is a little red one called Redbubble. Click on that. It takes you to my Redbubble store that Redbubble operates. I've uploaded, uh, I think, three different logos so far to the site. And the logo is on certain products like T-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, um, other other items. And you're welcome to peruse there all you want. If you find something you like, order it up and uh, you'll get it uh, probably within a, within a week. Uh, Peter Heckema ordered his shirt and he told me that I think it was three or four days he got it. It was just unbelievable. It came from San Francisco to Tarpon Springs, Springs Florida, three days. Incredible. And uh, I posted a photo uh, on my Facebook page and on Twitter uh, with him wearing it. So uh, uh, 
fantastic. I'm just thrilled. It's great. I will eventually be wearing mine. They're coming. Uh, <laughs> probably next week or so I'll have mine because I've got to get all three of them and uh, and more. I've got more logos uh, being put together. I've got a few other ideas of logos, and uh, there'll be uh, there'll be more coming as the time goes by. But right now we have what we have, and each one, each logo, something's been ordered from each logo so far. So that's oh, I'm over the moon. Thank you for your support on that. Okay, that's it from here. I'm going to say my goodbyes. Uh, just to check my last uh, couple of comments coming in. Scott Batchy, thanks. Bruce, always entertaining. Jennifer Curry, hi, Bruce. Love your channel. Jennifer, thank you for watching today. Judy Ann says, hey, Bruce, raining in Fresno. Yuck, uh, leaving on my transatlantic cruise this Saturday. Juicy. Judy, have a great time, and please keep in touch if you can. If you're on the ship, let us know how you're doing. Otherwise, talk to us after you're back and let us know how everything goes with you out there. I'd be uh, quite curious to see how it goes for you. Um, again, I'll be on tomorrow, Tuesday, at 5 o'clock tomorrow and 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, I'm thinking of the early show will be uh, will be Cruise News. Uh, and if it's a light day, we'll throw in some trivia. And in the evening, it might be travel trivia or other trivia. We'll see how we do on that. Uh, seems to go over very well with the viewers. <laughs> Debbie Emanuel, bye, Bruce, and everyone. See you all twice tomorrow that's right this is bruce with traveling with bruce saying thanks for joining me today i hope you have had a good one today let's hope for spring uh coming around the corner thanks for your thumbs ups today uh looks like i've got now how many is that 30 30 thumbs ups thank you i have 30 thumbs ups thank you for those i will see you tomorrow at five and eight o'clock and in the meantime have a good evening this is bruce saying goodbye for now and take care everybody see you later